Hey there. I am strategizing for my next project. And uh, this is what I'm going to be doing. This big dress from Simplicity. And I like it because wide sleeves, you know, I'm, I'm wearing my poofy shirt today. Big and bold because I can. And it has, it looks like a wrap, a mock wrap type top and a fuller skirt. And uh, in this picture, it looks like it has a ruffle, but I don't think it does. I've looked at the pattern, and I don't think it does. But what I'm, what I'm gonna do is, um, I have this linen. It's, it's a bold print. Um, it's a white fabric with a navy blue print on it. So, I think that's gonna be fun. You know, it needs a big outfit to use the big bold pattern, in my opinion. So, um, because it's a white, a lot of white linen, there is gonna be a lot of sheer places, and so I was thinking this would be a good project to show some lining techniques. The pattern itself does not designate it to be lined, but I'm going to anyway. So, I have, I have this ambiance Bemberg fabric. The ambiance, it's a natural fiber. It's, it's, it's like a rayon, which is, you know, debatable exactly what it is. I think it's like a wood based, but it's a breathable natural fiber. And it's very lightweight. It, it feels like silk, okay? Um, but I have a lot of it because I got a deal. And the one I'm going to use is kind of like this neutral tone, so I think that that will be nice underneath here. It's not going to make it too bright, and it's not going to change the color. And But because it is a natural fiber, I need to pre-wash it. So I'm going to cut off a length of it, um, serge the ends. I've already pre-washed my linen, and I run my linen through the washer and through the dryer because that's how I'm gonna treat the finished garment. So I wanna pre-treat my fabric in the same method. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my, my lining. Now, this pattern, I'm gonna use two different methods to line it. First, I'm not gonna line the sleeves. Sleeves can be sheer and that's just fine. But the bodice, I'm gonna flat line the bodice. And the skirt, I'm gonna bag line the skirt. So, I think it'll just work out well that way. So anyway, that's my plan. Okay, we're going to start cutting out the dress. And um, just a heads up, I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be. But that's just because there's several things going on here. The first thing is that this uh, fabric, it's 100% linen, it's fabulous light. It's going to be so breathable. Um, I've washed it. I've run it through the dryer. Now, I tore the edge here. So you can kind of see the pattern is actually pretty close to being printed on grain. You know, you can see, you can see the little middle here where you can't up here. But honestly, that's, that's close enough. I think that it's going to hang okay. So I'm not going to be laying out my pattern um, based on the straight. I'm actually going to be somewhat laying it out based on the design. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, the first things I'm going to do are the biggest pieces, which are going to be the two skirt pieces, the front, the back, the sleeves, and the uh, bodice pieces. Thankfully, this fabric, it's multi-directional. E this way is the same as that way. So if I need to put a piece upside down, I can do that because uh, matching the design is my goal here. So the way that I do skirts when I have a design is I like to match the center back and the center front um, because the sides, something, something's not going to match. And if I can get the center back and the center front to match, that's more obvious. So when I'm looking at my pattern, this is my center front over here. So let me pay attention to 
where I'm going to lay that so it's nice. Now I can see here's my straight. All right, this is my grain line. Right, well, maybe you can't see it, but there's an arrow going right here. I'm going to try to line that up so it lines up with the direction of the design. So I have it going straight down the center of these these little cross designs here. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll cut out one piece and then I'm going to cut out the second piece. That way I can make sure that this part here is going to match the way I want it to. So first of all, let me put some pins on here. And I, I'm a pinner. I do have pattern weights and I do use them periodically. But um, for things like this especially, where I'm going to be moving pattern pieces and adjusting them, I tend to over pin just so I know it's going to be super secure and not want to shift on me. All right, so I got that one piece of the skirt front cut. I have turned my fabric upside down. So this is the right side. It's more vibrant. This is the wrong side. Okay, so now... Um, let's see if it'll fit the right direction. Well, I'm a little short. See how I'm poking over the edges? But since this fabric is good both ways, I can flip this this way. So that's what I'm going to do. If your fabric was one directional, this wouldn't be an option and you'd be spending a lot of time wasting fabric. But, you know, I don't have to right now, so that's good. So what I'm looking at is my center front. So I can see what my center front looks like here. I need to match that on here. So let's see if I can. Um, it looks like I can match to this one. And it's kind of just shifting things around and when I find that it's working I'm going to stick a pin just to keep that part still while I move around the other parts. It's this is one of those things where you get into like the zen of sewing where you're definitely not in it for speed. You're just in it to enjoy the process. So just a quick peek. Yes, that's going to fit. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to let you watch. Um, and I'm going to be using this same process for cutting out the skirt back. So I'm not going to film all that because honestly, once you've seen me go through this painful process of matching up on one side, you, you'll know what the other side is going to look like. Okay, so the skirt front, skirt back were cut out like you saw, matched, and they're set aside. I cut out the sleeve. It doesn't need to match anything, so as long as you know it's straight, it's fine. So I cut the sleeve out, and the smaller pieces like cuffs and pockets and things like that, I've cut that out. Now I'm looking at the center front and the place that we're going to be matching to is the center front. So here's my front bodice piece and it's kind of like a wrap type, but there's a dotted line where the center front is going to be. So I am lining that up so it goes right down the middle of these two emblems here. Okay, so I have this piece. Um, this is the right side. I this is the wrong side on this one. So I'm I'm flipping this so that my basically my right sides are together. That way I know I'm going to end up with the right with two opposite pieces. Is what I'm trying to say. So now what I'm going to be doing is doing my very best. And again, I'm overpinning, but it's easier just for me to overpin. <laughs> is doing my best to match up fabrics. Now, here's the thing. Linen tends to walk around. So, like this is matched up, but that's not, you know what? I am scooting this linen over here until it does match up. Okay, 
So I've got it matched up, I think, pretty darn well. I don't even know if you can see. Here's the outline. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. This line here is where the center, center front is going to be. And since I have the edges correct, I know that this is going to end up correct also. So that's good. The back piece is on a fold. So that's easy. I don't have to worry about that one too much. So this is my lining fabric. It has been washed. It's been run through the dryer. I haven't ironed it yet, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But what I'm going to be doing is a flat lining or underlining process with this. And I'm only doing the front bodice. I'm not doing the back or the sleeves. I don't think it's necessary. But what you do, and I'm going to be cutting my lining a little bit bigger than my fabric. And that is just so I can make sure that I get everything exactly as I want. And then I can trim off the extra later. But what you're going to be doing is basically combining these two fabrics before you do any darts, before you do anything to it. And you will be working with a piece of fabric that is the two layers fused into one. And that way, you'll have all the benefits of a lined garment for the top. And the benefits that I want, and you have to think about what you want from your lining. Are you doing it because of a structural issue? Or like mine, are you just doing it for a modesty issue? And because I'm just doing it for a modesty issue, I'm using a, a fairly lightweight lining. Because all I want to do is block some of that view so you can see here I don't know if you can see it's very lightweight it's very soft it's amazing stuff honestly okay so I'm over here ironing and I'm gonna use steam just take it nice and easy and press it's um it is to iron it to make it nice and flat but it's also getting the top lining oh, how should I say kind of like to get into a relationship with the bottom one when you're pressing it somehow those little textures just seem to start melding together a little better so I'm gonna pin a few spots here just to keep it from shifting I'm gonna pin my corners So that way, the place where it was ironed, where all the fibers were meshing in one, as one, um, will stay together when I move it. Okay, for this next step, you're going to want to use a contrasting thread. I'm using a pink quilting thread just because it's, it's strong, it's easy. And you're going to take long basting stitches around the edge work with your on a flat surface and work with your fashion fabric up don't work with the lining up that way you can see right off if there's anything going wrong and a lot of people don't tie a knot at the end I do I do so I'm tying a knot at the end of my thread here and I'm gonna get started now you try as much as you can to leave your fabric flat and the stitches you're going to be taking are going to be, they don't have to be small. Uh, mine are probably about half an inch. But you see how I'm just leaving my fabric flat on the table and taking a stitch. You know, if you're starting to feel really comfortable, take two stitches. But the thing is not to pick it up and like drape it over your hand or anything while you're stitching because that's going to get the, um, the two layers unmeshed oh my goodness I dropped it out of my needle but anyway what you're gonna do is stitch all the way up when you get to a corner instead of just turning at at the uh, end like say you're you're basting at a quarter inch in don't just turn and go that way um, start it at the edge of the fabric and go that way it takes all the strain off your thread so 
let me re-thread my needle and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have this piece all basted together. And now I feel like I'm safe to go ahead and trim off the extra lining fabric. The reason I don't do that initially is because sometimes when you're pressing and getting everything lined up, if you trim your lining exactly the same size as the fashion fabric, sometimes things get skewed. And I have found that it's just easier to give yourself a little break ahead of time and uh, trim off later. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so now I have my front bodice piece. And I'm going to treat this, move this up here. I'm going to treat this piece just like it's one piece of fabric. Now, there is a pleat in the front and so I need to make sure that I make that pleat before I serge around the edges because I like to have my pleats done um, and my darts done before I serge so that edge is just like one piece instead of multiple layers. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't have circles on here but I'm going to be punching a hole at the very top of the dart line so I know where to match them. Okay, and for darts, I mark them on the right side of the fabric because it's easier to see, and I'm using a heat erasable pen, <clears throat> excuse me, so that when I iron it, it'll disappear. Okay, so looking at the instructions, this dart is not sewn up. All they want you to do is um, stitch across the bottom to hold it in place. So I'm just going to do that with my basting thread that I already have right here. And then I'm going to take this piece to my serger and serge around the edge. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this front bodice piece is pretty much done with the whole underlining process. I haven't pulled my basting stitches out yet. I will later. Um, but you can see the inside here, there's my pleat, the outside of it, and I've surged around the edges, being really careful and turning at the corners so I don't cut anything off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other front piece exactly like this, but opposite, of course. I just wanted to show you how this is turning out. Um, I've got both sides pretty much ready to go on my dress form and wait to be attached. But I want you to see, I have the center fronts lined up here. So here's the one over the other. And I just drew a line on the um, pattern. There's a line for the center front, so that's what I've drawn here. Now, the dress is not going to, it's not supposed to close up all the way up here at the neckline. It's going to be open, and actually once the, the band is sewed on, it's actually going to be more of like a V up there so if you can see it's going to be more like a V up at the top but so far so good and like I said linen tends to want to walk around and the lining that I put down it's not for structure it was just for opacity but this lining is very soft and malleable too so if you see these pieces and when I was putting my marks on it looked like a side was off a little bit or something I'm not worrying about that because it's just a matter of replacing it. I know the dimensions of each thing is correct. And when I when I make those seams, everything's going to line up just fine. So um, we're just going to move on. The next step here, I've done my little front bodice, is to put the front facing on. So I have these two pieces to a front facing. And I have fusible interfacing, the same uh, Pellon featherweight that I've been using for several other projects. It just works really good with these this woven weight. Here is my uh, front facing piece. Now before I put this on, I do need to come back and do a little stay stitching right here along this neckline. Even though I have it surged, I have it basted, uh, a tight row of... of uh, 
machine stitches right there would be a good thing. Then because I'm going to be actually with all the lining and thing I'm doing in this dress, I want it to be a little higher of a finish than my average everyday dresses. So instead of just serging it, um, I'm actually going to be turning under and stitching my edges so that it's going to be nice and uh, nice and clean from the inside. Okay, so these are my front facings, and this is how I've decided I'm going to finish them um, on this particular dress. Is I folded it in, so this is my interfacing, I folded it in, and then I ran a zigzag stitch along the edge. And I think that that's going to be just a, uh, a nicer bound edge on it. So these two pieces are going to be sewn um, straight up. Not along here, just straight up. Alrighty, so this seam was done at 3 8 inch, and then I already came back and understitched it. And I understitched it with a very slight zigzag. It's like a number one, which is like one millimeter wide zigzag. Um, just feeling different, you know, you can do whatever you want to. It's your project. So after I press this down, I'm going to come back and baste the bottom and the top curved edge here in place. Okay, I want to show you one more thing actually over here at my, my ironing board. So I've got my iron on, I've got it loaded with water so we should have steam, and I want to press this to make sure this is a nice flat edge. Now something that's very good to do, so see I'm, I'm putting my heat, but if you have a delicate fabric, like I, I, I actually think that these would be fine. But if you don't want to put a whole lot, get a piece of wood. Officially, it's called a clapper. It's just a heavy, flat piece of wood. And after you have the hot heat steam from your iron, you just push down on that. This is actually a piece when we redid our countertops a while back. Uh, my husband cut a little piece and sanded off the rough edges for me so that I can use that. And what it does is it flattens it and it seals that, that press for you. So, highly recommended. Um, I think you can buy a, an official piece of wood called a clapper, but um, honestly, countertop, countertop scrap worked very well. And I just catch it while it's still hot, while it's still a little bit steamy, and then press down with my uh, my arm strength, my great strength of my arms. And there you go. So I have the facings here. I have basted them on the machine a quarter inch in on both sides. So I'm going to come back on this side, and it says to top stitch at one and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead on the right side and draw some guidelines for doing that, that top stitching. Oops, right there. And I'm going to top stitch it down. Let me draw this line. And this line is going to be very obvious, and I think that there it's a style line also. So you can see right here, the top stitching lines we're doing right now are these. That kind of look like a band, but it's, it's the top stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and do those right now. Alrighty, so with that done, we're going on to the bodice back. And the bodice back is not lined. It's just regular sewing from now on. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my notches, mark my dots. And the first thing I'm going to be sewing is a stay stitch seam a quarter inch in. So I'm going to be running that just a quarter inch right around the neckline. Well, I got the stay stitching done up at my neckline and I went ahead and surged from my shoulder down, around, and across the shoulder. I did shoulder. I did not surge the neckline because that's going to be covered in a facing. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and pin and stitch my, get back your piece, my bodice front pieces. So I'm going to um, sew them at the shoulders and the side seams at a 5 8 inch stitch and press those seams open. 
Okay, the next thing that we are going to be doing is this neck band. And, oops, I'm going to need to apply interfacing to it the very first thing. So, so I have the interfacing applied to my neck band and I am marking my dots, clipping my notches. And it doesn't call for it, but I'm also clipping a notch at the center fold, the center back, just because that's going to help me line things up. Now I'm going to pin this piece onto my bodice. Okay, so before we go much further, we need to clarify on this neckband. What they're doing is calling the piece that has interfacing on it the neckband. They are calling the piece that we've cut that does not have interfacing, because you cut two of these. They're calling this one the neckband facing. So we are sewing the one with the interfacing on it onto the neck of the garment. It's the outside edge, the outside curved edge that we're going to be sewing on. So I've got, I'm starting in my back, in my very back there's two notches and then my center. So I've got two notches in my center. And then we have a dot in the middle right here. That dot matches with the top of the shoulder seam right there. And then the dot up near the point right there. That matches with the edge of your front bodice. Okay, so it's going to peek over. You See how this stick sticks out? That's okay. That's all right. Just make sure that dot matches up at the edge. So you're going to need to make some clips on your neckline in order to get that to fit on the curve of your facing or of your, your collar piece. But don't clip past your stay stitching edge. Your stay stitch is, it's like the point of no return. You don't want to cross that line. Actually, I wouldn't get within an eighth of an inch of it. But by clipping to that point, your fabric can make a curve, an outward curve, which will match this interface piece. Alrighty, so I've got it all pinned. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and stitch this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. While you're sewing it, be really careful that you don't make any puckers in the back side. Alrighty, that is a tricky seam to sew and get everything perfectly. I actually have a couple tiny, tiny little puckers, but um, they're small and I'm not going to worry about them. All of this seam allowance in here is going to get pressed up. So do what you can to get all of this pressed up. This is a very strange angle to press. So if you have a pressing ham, this would be a very good time to use it because you can wrap your uh, collar kind of around it. Okay, so with that done, now you have your collar piece that's just fabric. And this outside edge that we sewed on the other one, they want you to press it under. So instead of you know, trying to do it flat because that's just not going to work. I'm just folding it up and they, they say a generous quarter inch. So that's kind of debatable to me. But you can see I just kind of like hit it with the tip of my iron as I go. And then once I've done that, let me move the ham. It's not necessary here. And then once I've done that, so like say I have this part has a nice little crease from the tip of my iron then I can come back and press it, if that makes sense. Just to try to work it in. Use steam if your fabric will let you use heat with steam because it's that steam that's going to help to shape, shape your fabric. Anyhow, take your time. Don't try to rush this and just uh, shape in your folded and pressed edge. See? Here is our bodice and going to be taking the piece that we just pressed under and match it up on here on top of the other one. 
pin it nicely. You're going to pin your folds up also and stitch the entire outside edge. So up from this edge up and all the way around the neckline and you're going to do that at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is what it should look like right now. Now I'm going to make some clips in here and fold it up and we're going to do under stitching. All right, and that's when you press the seam allowances and we're going to press them up towards this piece that we just sewed on and we're going to be stitching probably right along this edge just inside maybe an eighth of an inch or so in but it's going to take a little bit of work now one of you said instead of clipping use pinking shears and it would ease well so you know what we're going to give this a go and see if I just run some pinking shears if that's going to going to give me enough ease to be able to do my top stitching. So we'll give it a go and I'll let you know. All right, so I pinked it about a quarter inch out and I understitched it using my one millimeter wide zigzag that I used earlier. And now I'm going to turn and press this under and where we pressed up should be just about matching to cover up the other stitches. My fold is actually quite below the stitching in some spots, so I'll just take it as we go. If I need to adjust that fold on the bottom, I can do that. I also trimmed this corner here to within about an eighth of an inch of the corner just to take the bulk out of there. And down here, it's a good idea See if you can see down here, this is with the corner that we sewed. Um, just trim some of that stuff off so that when you turn it, get this thread. Okay, so that when you turn it, then it's just nice and clean and you don't have funky things sticking out. I wanted to show you um, before turning this corner, this inner corner here that has the facing and everything from the front. I'm clipping that corner not all the way to the stitching but closer because there is a lot of bulk right here. Well I've got it all pinned down and the directions say to flip it over and stitch in the ditch all the way around to catch it. I'm just not feeling that uh, that positive about that so what I'm going to do is actually hand stitch this in here. I think that it would be a lot better for me to just, you know, get my needle and thread, take my time, and whip stitch it in nice and tightly. Okay, so the very last thing I'm gonna do tonight, and this I guarantee, is to baste the uh, bottom here. And what you do is you match the center. So I have my center you can see that it's lining up really well there. Here's the edge, and it's coming straight down. So I'm gonna be basting across from this point over to this point. Good morning. So here's where we are today. This is basted down, matching the centers, and I've just pinned it up here. I am really hoping that they do something in here to close it up because that's kind of loose, but I'm sure they will. The next part is going to involve the sleeves, and the sleeves are very large, and there is a lot of gathering on the sleeves, which reminded me of a gathering thing that I do sometimes, so I just wanted to show you while it's on my mind. I have this spool of thread. I think I got it at a yard sale once, but it's extremely strong. It might even be fishing line for all I know. Actually, I think it is. But what I do is I put this in a bobbin. I don't run it through my needle, I run it through the bobbin because the bobbin thread, even if you just run straight um, basting stitches, the bobbin thread's the one that you wanna pull. It just pulls a lot easier. And uh, you might have to adjust your tension a little bit just to make sure that it's really, really loose, but honestly, it, it's so much easier. But 
There's another way, if I'm doing like a huge thing of um, gathering stitches and it's going to be really a hard pull, I want to make sure the threads don't break, and it's using this foot. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot of feet. Where is my little board here? There it is. That's my magnet board of feet. And um, finding out the ways to use them is always intriguing to me. So I wanted to share with you. So what I do is, let's say I want to gather a, say, a foot of this. What I do is I pull out my bobbin thread at least that far, a little bit farther. And I have to use a needle threader, but there's a little hole. Can you see? There's a little hole in the very front of this foot. And I stick my needle threader in there because it's very difficult just to force this big fat thread through, especially because it unwinds on me. But I'm going to thread it through that hole. From, from the inside to the outside. Okay, so it comes out and goes forward. So my loose, my loose thread is coming forward. And now I can put this foot on. So, you set your machine to a zigzag. I do about, oh, let's try a three and a half wide zigzag. The thread for the uh, needle I put inside the slot. So what I'm going to do is run a couple zigzags back and forth just to anchor it. And what that little hole does is it holds my th bobbin thread in the middle and now I'll just stretch my bobbin thread out to where I want to gather and let it run. Uh, that's about right. Back it up. So this bobbin thread is locked in. There is no way you can pull it out. All right. Well, this is what it looks like. You can kind of see on the white part better, where I have a light zigzag over my uh, bobbin thread. And then you can just pull it. And you can pull really, really hard because it's a super strong thread. And it's just being run over the top so these stitches are okay they're not gonna they're not gonna break it does get a little bit bunchy when you you know gather a whole bunch but it's not difficult to run two or three of these rows parallel to each other so anyhow okay so this is my sleeve this is the top and the very wide bottom down here I don't even think I can get the whole thing on camera so this is going to be a very poofy massive fabric around the cuff. So I have punched my holes and I am drawing the dots with my heat erasable pen. And the other thing I do on sleeves that just because it's me, I put a big letter B on the back piece. That way at a glance I know this corner is the back piece. All right, so now at the bottom, there's these two dots. They're about an inch or so in on each side. I'm gonna run two rows of gathering stitches with my super thread and the bobbin. I'm not gonna do this exact thing, just regular gathering stitches, two rows there. Then they want you to ease stitch between the notches. Well, here's my dots. My notches are probably about here. Okay, so I am putting my regular foot back on. And like I said, I have my super thread in the bottom. And what I'm going to do is run the gathering stitches on both of the sleeves first. And then I'm going to pull out my super thread, put my regular thread back in, and run my um, E stitches into the top. So my first row of gathering stitches, straight stitch, long length. And I'm putting it so the edge of my foot is running against the surged edge of my fabric. My second row of stitching, I'm running at about three-eighths of an inch. So there's about an eighth of an inch. Uh, you can see about an eighth of an inch between the two rows. Okay, so I have my pins 
here where the notches are just to make it easier to see and I'm going to be ease stitching this in so the way I do it is always as I put this finger back behind the foot and I'm going to push it get a little bit of fabric there push it towards the foot and down towards the floor pretty hard and start sewing a straight stitch and you can kind of see it bunching up in the back after it gets a little too much, I let it go and start up again. It's got these tiny, tiny little accordion-ish type gathers. And that is just enough, usually, to set in your sleeve nicely up at the top. And if it's not quite enough, as you're sewing the sleeve into the armhole, you can add extra ease at that point. So I'm going to do the other sleeve, and then sew the side seams, the inside underarm seam of the uh, sleeve together. So it's all pressed together and do that at 5 eighths. So I've got my side seam sewn and I am just going to press, press it open. So the next piece I'm going to be dealing with is the sleeve band, what they call it. It's, it's a cuff and this does have interfacing. So as always, I am going to apply the interfacing to the fabric and then come back and transfer my markings. Okay, so what the directions say, one of these edges has a notch, this edge has a notch, this edge does not. And it says to sew it together and then press the unnotched edge up 5 eighths and then trim it. You know what, it's a lot easier for me to press up when this is flat. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and press up and trim while it's flat and then I can be careful to match up where my crease is and my notch and sew it at that point. So right about there. This again is most likely just to be kind of grading the seam lines on the inside so there's not a huge shelf of bulk at the top of the cuff. Okay, so now it's time to put our cuffs on and um, lots and lots of fabric to go in there. So halfway across your cuff, there's a notch. I'm just gonna stick a pin there so I can see it easier. So I'm gonna slip the cuff over this big mass of fabric and match up the seam and the notch. And just kind of pull on both of these strings and make it fit. There's a lot, a lot of fabric. <laughs> my strings are kind of in my way. But having the um, bobbin string a different color actually makes it easier to remind yourself that one side is the bobbin and one side is not. So, Okay, so what I have just done here is I've secured the ends of my one set of my gathering stitches to the pin that's pinning down my seam allowance, just that whole figure eight thing. And on the other side, I am pulling my heavy duty bobbin threads and just starting to gather. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of fabric to be gathered into a very small space here. Um, I am thinking that there might have been a better way to gather and attach this to the cuff beforehand, before um, sewing the side seams. I think that that might have been a better option somehow, but you know what, we're this far into it now that we're just gonna keep on going. But if I was to do this again, <laughs> it always seems like I'm throwing that out, I would sew this, the uh, sleeve and at the point where the cuff is still flat, 
and the sleeve has not been sewn together in the armhole, I would do all of this gathering then and then sew it straight down, the sleeve and the cuff all in one shot. But, you know, hindsight and all that, so here we are gathering in a tiny, tiny circle. I'll be right back when it's all done. So this is what it looks like when it's all gathered. It's a pretty, pretty full amount of gathers all the way around. Even if you had a free arm, that's too small to slip on a free arm. So it would be a lot easier to sew this on before you sew the side seam. All right, so I got the cuff sewed on. Um, I just turned it here. And the next step is to trim it, but pull it out first so you can get a good look at what you've done before you trim anything because um, there's so much here that if it get, got a little bit wonky, if you try to fix it after you trim it, it could be a disaster. Now, after I have sewed this, I can say 100%. Don't do it the way the directions say. What you need to do is instead of sewing this seam, okay, and instead of sewing this seam, put those two together flat and do the gathering at that point. Then this sleeve will be all gathered up to this nice and flat and then you can fold them in half, sew this side seam all the way down because it lines up, it matches, and go from there. So the next instruction says trim seam. It's not actually say how much to trim the seam. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. This bulky part with all the gathering stitches, I'm going to trim that. And actually, since I got these out, I'm starting to love them again. I'm going to use my pinking shears, but I'm going to trim that to about a quarter inch, which is going to be taking all of this surged edge off, which will save a lot of bulk. Then this one that has the interfacing on it, I'm just going to trim like maybe an eighth of an inch off of that. So let's see here. So I fold everything else back out of the way. And I'm just trimming basically, oh, this is thick, basically to cut off all of the, the serge stuff. And I needed to serge it. It's not like, oh, why do you do that and then cut it off? I needed to because when you're gathering, you're running your hands over the edge a whole bunch. And if you don't have that edge protected, it's just going to fray out all over and make a bigger mess. So it's necessary while you're gathering, but at this point it's not. So I'm going to just continue trimming that off, trim off the interface side, and uh, there you go. So this is what it looks like now, all trimmed up. So now I fold my cuff over so that it matches up, and I'm going to cover up my stitch line. I don't want to see it. I just folded it over so it looked right on the inside and put some clips on the top. And then I'm just going to keep an eye on it and place a pin around, double check that it's covering the stitches on the inside, just like that. But see how these little seam allowance pieces with all the little gathers want to poof out? Gotta hang on to those, keep those little babies in check. So now this is what it looks on the outside. And I'm gonna come back and I am going to run a line of top stitching. It said to stitch in the ditch. I don't want to do that because there's so many folds right here, I can just see problems coming. So I'm gonna run it very close to and parallel to the seam line, but just on the cuff side. So the easiest way to sew this tight little cuff on a flat machine or whatever you're using is to turn the sleeve inside out and so your your cuff is going to be going upright like this that way it can remain flat the hard part for me is I put my pins on and in in the opposite way if I was to do this again I would stick it so my pin heads were sticking out because that way um, you don't have to fight to pull them out that way or you can just go straight over them and if you're, if you're very careful and you're going nice and slow, that would probably be okay. But going this way, you can double check as it goes under that the uh, seam allowances are, are in where they are supposed to be. Okay, so finally, with much agony in the cuffs, 
um, we have two sleeves. Now, if you were doing the view that just had the big, wide, ruffled cuff, well, you wouldn't have to worry about any of this because it, uh, I'll show you, because this view is just basically hemming the edge. So if this intimidates you, just do this view. Much easier. Anyhow, what we're going to go to now is setting the sleeves into the bodice armholes. So this is my bodice, and you can tell the front because it has the lining in it. And this is my sleeve, and again, I have my B. There it is. My B is marked, so I know at a glance that that is the back. So it must go in this armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it, matching my notches, matching the dots, matching the top seam up here. And um, I should be able to just take it over to the machine and sew it in. Alright, I'm about to sew on my sleeve and I'm starting my stitch at the notch just before my underarm seam. So I'm doing it at 5 eighths of an inch. And I've got a, a seam, my stitch is set at about two and a half. So I'm just being very careful to go around, catch everything. Make sure that nothing is folded up. And it all is laying very flat and everything up to the dot. Now your first dot is where your sleeve cap starts and that's where we need to really pay attention to working in any extra ease. So here I'm at the dot. So I'm going to lay it out flat. And when I pulled off the pin you could see this little extra that pooched out. That's the ease I need to work in. So from the inside with this hand I'm going to pull that fabric out just so it, it lies even on the edge here, okay? Holding the top edge secure, and the top edge is the bodice, the bottom is the sleeve, I'm going to let those feed dogs just work in the extra ease that needs to get in there. Go flat over the top seam, and then do the same thing coming down to the dot on the opposite side. Well, this middle pin, so I'm at the top. This down here is my second dot. And this extra, I'm just going to let the feed dogs pull it in. There's not very much, but you just want to have a pretty cap on your sleeve. So now I can go back to where I started. But when I get here, I'm not stopping here. What I'm going to do is go overlap my previous one, just a couple, just to lock it in place. And then I'm going to jet off to the side into the seam allowance just a little bit, like about between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. And I'm running a second row of stitching under this arm up to, oops, up to this uh, notch and then back up and what that's going to do is give me just two rows of stitching in the underarm seam and uh, that's just extra strength. Okay so here is my underarm seam and where I have it stitched double this is a pinking shears type of project I am going to just trim in and pink over Ooh, it's thick over all these seams here pink over that double stitched area. Okay, that's going to give you a lot more flexibility in your flexibility in your underarm seam there. And I just wanted to show I do like to press my sleeve heads on the top of my ham because I can get a nice shape that way and if I use my steam iron well, it's not steaming right now. I must be out of water. There it goes. If I use my steam iron, what it does is there's a wool side and a canvas side on the ham. And the steam 
if you press it so that you're on top of the wool part, it'll sink into that wool and radiate back up and, and give you a nice, nice sleeve cap. Okay, I'm about to get started on the skirt. Now, I need to cut the lining for the skirt. And my lining is going to be slightly shorter than my finished garment, fashion garment. So there's a cut line here for view C that's about six inches shorter. I'm actually going to be cutting my lining there. But what I want to do is kind of give you a game plan on what I'm going to be doing with this lining. So the skirt goes together very easy. It's, it's just straight at the top. There are no pleats. There are no gathers. It's just straight, which is fabulous for this. So to put together the skirt fabric itself, there's side pockets, okay? The uh, lining I'm going to put together similar to this where I'm sewing the fronts together at the center seam, the backs together at the center seam. And then on my lining, I'm going to be sewing them up the side seams to just below the pocket, okay? The reason is that I want the pocket to fall inside my lining because the pocket is the same pattern as the dress and it's a very bright pattern so that can show through and uh, I think if the, the pocket itself is inside the liner it'll be a clear look so I'm just going to be sewing these side seams up to this point then I'm going to sandwich them inside of each other that way I'm smooth all the way up and I will serge across the top uh, just as one piece and that'll bind the lining to the fashion fabric at the very top edge and at that point then I can go ahead and just attach it to the bodice as if it's just one piece okay so let's go so the first thing I'm doing is um, I've got my lining underneath here and like I said my lining is shorter and I'm just going to be marking all of my notches in both the lining and the fashion and my circles. These circles over here, they're indicating where the pocket placement is going to go. So I'm going to put this lower one on the lining also because that's going to tell me how far I need to sew. All right, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is working with the front piece. And before I sew the center front, what I'm going to be doing is ironing some of my stay tape across the top edge of my fashion fabric. And um, I, might, I might do it on the lining also, just because that lining is so squishy, I don't want it to get out of shape either. So I'm going to do that first, just working on my fronts. Once I have that done, I will be coming and surging around each of the pieces. Um, the lining... I am not going to be surging around each piece. I will just surge around the thing as a whole. I'll show you what I mean. So sorry to be bouncing back and forth between lining and skirt, but I'm kind of doing them at the same time. I wanted to show you this is the front lining. And I've put my stay tape at the top just to hold it secure. I have sewed the center seam surged over that and then I have surged around the edge of the piece in its entirety except this top. So I went down the sides and around the bottom. When I do the back piece I'll be doing it exactly like this and then I will be joining them at this lower dot and sewing the side seams up to that point. So next time you see lining that's what the, it'll look like. The back and front will be joined up the side, but this is this is how the individual pieces look. Okay, so this is the skirt front, and what I did is after I put the tape on, I surged around each individual front piece, then I sewed it down the center here and pressed the seam open. And remember all the effort I went through to match up the... Uh, design here? Well, that's what we ended up with. What I like, it actually looks like a flower in these spots. Um, it doesn't jump out at you that there's something glaring, that there's something misplaced. It just makes you wonder, huh, that's interesting. But anyway, this is how that matched seam turned out. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going ahead and marking those two dots on my pocket piece. But before I sew them on here, 
I'm going to serge around the, not the very top again, but the whole uh, outside edge from the very top down around and back up the side seam side. I'm going to do that on all of my pocket pieces at once just to get it out of the way. So hopefully you can see I have two pockets pinned on here. Now this seam you're going to sew at 3 8 a little bit smaller than the average seam. And then after that's sewn, flipping the pocket out, pressing it, and understitching on the pocket. Okay, so my pocket is sewn on, and the seam allowance is pressed so that it's the skirt that's sticking out, and the seam allowance is going towards the pocket, okay? So coming back now, I have that pressed. Looking at it from the right side, I'm going to be, where's my pointer? I'm going to be doing a row of understitching right here, about an eighth of an inch in, on the pocket side, holding that seam allowance down. And you're going to do this the same way on the pockets on the back piece. Okay, so I have my back done exactly the same as my front, and in my center back seam allowance I put a big red letter B, so I can remember this is the back piece. And what we're going to be doing is pinning get this straight here, pinning the sides together. So I'm going to match up our pockets, all of the seams, all of the notches, everything like that. So once you sew all the way around and down, and this seam that comes up here around your pocket, so say this is your 5 8 inch allowance, you're going to come up to this dot. All right, you're going to go right past your 3 8 inch seam that you sewed the pocket on. So you're sewing at 5 8 and then come down. All right, does that make sense? Let me poke that in there. So when you're sewing the pocket, I'm just kind of drawing the, the red where the seam line will be. As you come around here, you're going to go up. This is where the dot is. Cross that seam where we sewed the pocket on and then come down and continue down this way. Okay, and then also once all that is done you'll also up here where there's this dot on this side on the, the skirt side you're going to sew from that dot up and that should be a 5 8 inch seam allowance there. Alright, so I want to give you an update on where we are. I have, this is the lining. It is sewed together as a complete skirt. The bottom edge is just serged. The top is sewn together. The fronts are sewn together. The backs are sewn together. It is open where the pocket will be. Okay, I actually stopped sewing about maybe a little more than half an inch away from the bottom of the pocket just to give myself some room. The skirt part itself is sewn together. Backs, fronts, and the side and the pockets are sewn on. Um, so before I slip the lining over that dress, though, I'm going to put lace around the bottom. This lining is um, it's a very light fabric. And the lace I'm going to put on here is a cotton, and so it's going to add a little bit of weight to it. So hopefully that'll keep it down a little bit. And also, I just like lace, you know. No real reason except for I think it'll be pretty, and there's only so many places as a grown woman that you can put lace on your clothes without looking too over the top. So I'm going to run just a row of lace around the bottom of this, and then fold it under like this so it'll be a nice edge. And once I have that done, then I'm going to go ahead and slide this onto our main skirt. First, what I need to do is, okay, so the back, this is the front of my skirt. And we're going to want these pockets to come to the front. So what I need to do is clip in the seam allowance here the back seam allowance and what that will do this is the pocket I clipped right under it so that I can press the side seam seam allowance open and flat and press this pocket flat towards the front so it'll be like that okay I moved the camera up high so hopefully 
will be able to see this. And I just wanted to point something out. Someone was asking me in the comments, and when you use your leather punch, I have a scrap of leather. Um, it's just a scrap. You can use an old piece of belt or something. That, the tissue paper goes between the leather and the hole punch. If you go to punch it straight on top of your fabric, you're going to punch a hole straight through your fabric. Don't do that. Put your piece of leather or something there. And honestly, it's probably a good idea not to do it on top of your fabric. Do it somewhere else. But a lot of times I don't realize that I need to punch a hole until I have it pinned on. So anyway, that aside, here is my skirt. And I am looking at the front of it here. So I am putting my lining on and I have it so that when my lining is in the pretty side is showing all right so I'm going to open this up stick my hand through my lining bunch my skirt up and pull it through kind of like a little bag now I'm going to match my center fronts and my side seams now when I was doing my lining um, I pressed my side seam open and then the part that was open here where the pocket would be I just pressed that seam allowance under so I'm going to line up that seam allowance right up here where the pocket is and I'm going to stick a pin here I can always move it around later while I'm finalizing everything before I stitch it but yeah so see I have a little bit of ease here this the main skirt me has a little bit of ease when I sew this piece I'm going to baste it together on my regular machine and when I do that I'm going to do my trick where I work in any gapingness using my uh, feed dogs to work in that ease just like I do when I'm doing a uh, a sleeve or something like that okay so I have my top front pinned on I'm gonna bring my back up here Again, my skirt has a B I'm gonna do the same over here where I just pin it Hang on, let me clip that chain okay so I'm going to pin it just up to the side seam allowance on that side. Pin it in the center here. Okay, so I've got it all pinned together at the top of my skirt. What I'm going to be doing is running a stitch along the top at about 3 8 7 inch in just to secure everything. If there's any ease I need to work in, I'll do it right then. So from the front, I have both of the pockets. Let's see, bring you up a bit. I have both of the pockets on the inside of the lining and it looks like this. On the back, the pockets of course are not shown but what I have is going along the edge here where the pocket is. Um, it's going to be caught in the stitching up here, but I'm also going to come down probably a couple spots and just tack it, tack this lining to this seam allowance just to keep it secure. Okay, but that's just on the back. The front you don't really need to because the pocket's going to be flapped over it and protecting it that way. Okay, so I have my top basted and surged, and I am ready to attach it to my bodice. So I have my center front up here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so here's my center front. I've got my bodice, and I'm going to tuck it in here so the waistband of the bodice is up. And I still have that line that I drew on my bodice that was marking the center front. Where are you? Here you are. This red line that I had marked the center front on. So I'm going to go ahead and match that up. Okay. Now my side seams should match up also. Yep. My 
center back seam. Well, there's not a center back seam on the blouse. So what I'm going to do is just match up my side seam and pull it out, and there it is. And yes, it's in the center of the motif like we planned, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that one. And finally, the other side seam. Now, what they want you to do is sew this together in such a way that you're making a big elastic casing. They call for a quarter inch elastic. I'm going to beef this up some because it's a big skirt. And once I added this lining, it's a, there's a really weird thing in physics that happens. You can take a really light fabric that's a lining and you attach it to something and all of a sudden it's like that fabric weighs so much more than it did before. I don't, I don't quite understand it, but the skirt has a lot of heft to it now. So I'm actually going to make a casing for a regular waistband type of elastic. I'm going to use this, just making sure it didn't dry rot. <laughs> it is uh, just under an inch. It's about a three quarter inch elastic, non-roll elastic. And this is what I'm going to be using because I think a quarter inch elastic would just would not hold up to what I need here. So I'll finish pinning this. Okay, so I have a plan of attack here. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch the bodice to the skirt. And I'm going to do that at a regular 5 8 inch all the way around. Okay, so here's the dress front at this point. This is the seam. I sewed it at 5 8 to attach the bodice to the skirt. And um, we got a lot of bulk here. Lots of layers of things going on. That just reinforces my thought that we need a, uh, a more substantial elastic on here. So the dress itself at the waistband, sorry, I think you're this way. At the waistband, there's a big sash, and that's the last piece we need to sew is this big sash that's going to cover up the waist itself. And because of that, I am not too worried about having a, a couple rows of stitching show here. So what I'm going to be doing on the inside of this dress, I have the seam allowances pressed up. So the skirt and everything, the seam allowance is pressed up. I have this uh, bias tape that I made out of a muslin. And it is a good width for making a casing for my elastic. So I'm just showing you on this side because it's a little easier to see. I'm going to be sewing it so that the bottom edge of the casing is going to be just above the stitching line where I sewed the bodice to the skirt. All right, then the um, top line, it's just going to be where it falls naturally. So on the outside, when I'm done with that, you're going to see two rows of stitching. And that's going to be my casing that this elastic is going to go through. But since the sash is going to cover that, I'm not going to worry. And if anything, it'll kind of go along with this idea of a row of stitching that's coming up here. Now, there is one thing that I don't see here. And I'm looking forward to where they have putting on the sash and everything. I don't see anywhere where they're wanting to put any kind of a front closure. It looks like this is just, you know, leave as is. I will most likely come and put a snap in here at the minimum. So once I have this part done, I'm going to try it on, see how it, it folds, see how it it reveals, and then I will, uh, I'll make that judgment call then. Before I, I pin that on, I just wanted to show you what the inside looks like right now. So you can see my top is lined, my bottom is lined, and this is going to be covered by my bias tape here. That just seems like the best option for me. I'm going to be starting it at a uh, center back and I'm going to be doing it in such a way that my bias tape is just going to 
start with a nice clean butt edge and end with a nice clean butt edge and I'm going to leave it open and that way um, I can put in the elastic easily. Okay so I've got my bias tape sewn on the top and the bottom stitches and actually I'm happy with this because I think it's really going to help uh, support this weight of the skirt and also make it lay flatter because there wasn't any top stitching in the uh, in the pattern. So I'm cut my elastic. I cut it uh, the size of my waist minus two inches and then because this is such a fat thick elastic and I don't want to add any extra bulk to it I'm going to be doing this thing uh, where I can sew them together but to get it started what you need to do is just get a little scrap of fabric and zigzag the end the tail end of your elastic to it and I'm just gonna put a straight pin up here so it doesn't go anywhere and start feeding this through. While I'm doing this I wanted to show you one more little thing. My bodkin that I use it has a little loop at the end so like this is this is kind of a, a pain pulling things through. I get it up to a point where it's all bunchy and I stick my little straight pin through that loop at the end of the bodkin. That's going to give me a handle here to hold on to it while I work all of this stuff down. Okay, so I got the elastic through and I want to show you how I'm going to connect it. So this is my piece that has the little zigzag onto this piece of fabric. Here's my other end. What, what I'm going to do, so I want to make sure they're not twisted first of all. And what I'm going to do is pin the end that is not sewn onto the elastic right up against the one that is so that the two ends meet. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to run zigzag stitches on the new one and probably another row here and another two rows of zigzag just to make sure it's really secure. Then I can trim off the excess fabric beside the elastic and it should be nice and flat and go in the casing without any big bumps on it. Okay, so it looks kind of like a mess, but it is very, very secure. So now I can just pull this. It's going to pop in place. Try to redistribute the elastic bunching so it's even all the way around. I'm going to leave that right now because the edges are folded in nicely. Nothing's going to fray, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so the last piece that we're going to be sewing is the sash. Now there are two long wide pieces here and what we're going to do is obviously one at a time, fold them in half lengthwise. So I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to make my opening honestly a little bit less than halfway across. That way I, I'm, I'm at a, a good point for turning both sides. And what I'm going to be doing is sewing this at 3 8 and then turning it. So I've got it sewed. I am just going to trim off around the corners and the tips just to take any fullness out there so that I can turn it to nice sharp corners where I want. And they're ready to turn. So I'm going to be using this turner today because, you know, they all have to come out and play at some point. This one works pretty good when you have something that's not too long and pretty wide. So just take it to the end, clip it, and bring it over. And having that opening in the middle of the sash makes it a whole lot easier to flip these things. Alright, so I have the ties. I turn them right side out, press them, and I did go ahead and top stitch the edges. One reason is because I needed to close up that opening that I had. And then once I started, I decided that it just looks, it looks nice and crisp this way. Okay, now when you pin it on, and you're pinning it on at the side seam, lost it again. Okay, when you pin it on at the side seam, you're going to aim your sash towards the back. I'm just kind of lightly pinning this. I'm going to come back and machine stitch it 
right along here. Almost a stitch in the ditch, but not quite. I'm just going to basically go right over where my top stitching is. But just a side note, you're going to want to make sure you have your elastic all evened out before you do this because the stitches you're going to make are going to go over your elastic. So if you don't have it settled nice and even and say all of your gathers are in one side and not the other, you're going to get them locked in place there. So make sure that your elastic, that you've, you know, pulled it out, shaken it out, done everything you can to make sure that everything is distributed evenly. Alrighty, you know what time it is? Hemming time. And of course, I'm using my stretch lace. And some people are asking why. And honestly, you can hem a dress any number of ways. I'm just showing you my preferred way. And it's this is particularly nice when you're dealing with a hem like this that is curved because the stretch lace, when you put it on, it's going to work a little bit like elastic, but not as dramatically, and absorb some of this wider bulk so that when you go to hem it, it's nicely tucked in. I know that these blues, they clash, but it's fun. So anyway, what I do is I sew along the first track and because this is a curved edge, I am gonna stretch my lace as I sew it, all right? And then when I fold it up, see how when I stretch it, it'll bunch it in. It's, I'm kind of like exaggerating it here, but you get the idea. So this is about what I've decided for my hem. You can see this is the finished length of my lining. And yeah, it is overkill lace and lace, but you know what? I, well, me and, you know, all of you are the only ones who are going to know that it's in there. And extra lace makes me happy right now. So that's about what it is. I am, I could come back and stitch this by hand um, so that it's not really showing that much on the outside. I could do that. But because there's so much top stitching in the top part of this dress, I don't think that it would be out of character to have a machine stitched seam on the bottom of the dress. So that's what I'm gonna do. So. Maybe on my next video, I will hem something totally different. <laughs> but for now, this is what we've got. We are so close to being done. There's one more thing I need to do though, and that is I'm gonna put a snap right here. This is the fullest point of my bust. That's the point where if something is gonna come fluey, that's where it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna sew a little snap right here and I'm going to stitch my label in the back because I think this dress is pretty and it deserves a label and after that it is finished
that the result is really nice. And even though it didn't call for it, I think that adding the lining really did help. Uh, it's not necessary if your fabric doesn't call for it and you don't have to. But there's something about wearing a dress or a skirt or a garment at all that is lined that makes it feel more special, if that makes any, any sense. Um, but the thing with linings, you know, I use two different methods and there's more methods than that. But when, you, when you're starting to line things, just think of why you're lining it. And if you're lining something because the fabric that you're using is really, really uh, silky or movable or something like that and it just needs more structure, you might not want to line it with the type of lining that I did. You might want something more structured. I have lined things with uh, broadcloths, I've lined things with pre-washed muslins, I've lined some things with canvas. Um, it depends on what your purpose is. And for my purpose, it was just because this is white linen and I tried to show you where I could pull the skirt out and you didn't see anything through it. And it is a very rainy, cloudy day, but still. Otherwise, I think you would have been able to. And that's just me. I feel more comfortable that way. So, one of the other things I would mention on this dress is if you're going to be doing this version with the long sleeve, with the cuff, by all means, don't sew that center seam until after you have gathered the sleeve onto the cuff and then sew it straight down because, yeah, that was a, that was not fun. Move, kitty. And then the other thing was the elastic. Um, and it might just be because I added the lining that my dress felt a lot heavier than um, they might have planned for when they designated a quarter inch elastic. I put in the three quarter inch non-roll elastic and it feels good. It feels like it's it has enough oomph to hold all that fabric into where it's supposed to be. So I think that was a good call for, for my particular make. And if I was to do it again, I would take that extra elastic width into consideration and maybe make, um, add like an extra little bit of length to my bodice and to my skirt just to make up for it. Because I did notice that uh, where the elastic hits, it's, it's still at my waist, but it's more of the upper part of my waist, which is fine because the sash goes over it anyway, but just to say, it, the adding that little half inch might make the adjustment that you need. But measure your own self, measure the patterns, and make those changes that you need to. This cat. Boy. Um, so that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.